Welcome everyone to this NSF webinar on nitrosamines and the impact and potential impact on investigational medicinal products. As you are no doubt aware, NSF are an international company that offer expert assistance in many disciplines to help companies protect and improve human health. Welcome, my name is Paul Cummings. I'm an associate of NSF Pharmaceutical Services. I've worked in the industry for over 30 years in pharmaceutical development and commercialization, developing products from candidate selection through clinical trials into commercial manufacture. My view on product development is that we should, as an industry, develop the best possible products that we can for each molecule that we are working with. This webinar will concentrate on the current issue of nitrosamines in commercial products and how this topic can impact our development portfolios, specifically investigational medicinal products. NSF Pharmaceutical Services offer many areas of support to the pharmaceutical industry in the form of experts skilled in multiple disciplines. I'm sure as industry professionals we are all aware of nitrosamines and we've seen in the literature and in publications from regulatory agencies the current requirements to assess nitrosamine potential in our products. Nitrosamines are molecules of interest because they are classed as probable carcinogenic materials. That means that they can be a contributing factor in an increased risk of developing cancer. This is because nitrosamines on metabolism form alkylating agents. Alkylating agents as a class are well documented as potential carcinogenic agents, therefore of concern to the pharmaceutical industry. There have been well documented investigations of the presence and formation of nitrosamines in H2 antagonists such as cimetidine and ranitidine and also in the sartans. Even though nitrosamines are deemed as having a low potential risk, they do however carry a risk. It is essential that we understand our products and we understand the potential risk of our products and any agents that may form within them to our patients who take these products. Even accepting that nothing is risk free, it is our responsibility in the industry to make safe and efficacious pharmaceutical products. And to that end, we have to understand our products and understand the potential for all risks, including nitrosamines. Detection of nitrosamines in existing commercial products has led to a well-documented multi-agency approach to assess the potential for nitrosamines and where they are present, the actual content of nitrosamines in existing commercial products. This has resulted in the requirement for product license holders to assess their current portfolio for the presence of or the risk of formation of nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are important because from analysis of existing nitrosamine exposure it has been determined that throughout a lifetime of exposure, nitrosamines may increase the potential for developing cancers. Therefore, limits have been set for exposure to nitrosamine over a lifetime's intake to assess the potential of risk to patients. In some cases, that risk to patients may well outweigh the therapeutic benefit of the medicines we are developing, and therefore it is important that we understand the impact and the potential risk of nitrosamine formation. We are our products experts and the responsibility falls to us. Nitrosamines can be present in a drug product through a number of different routes. It could be a carryover from the active pharmaceutical ingredient. It could be a result of the structure of the API. It could be a result of the processing conditions of the API, either during manufacture of the API or during manufacture of the drug product. Nitrosamines can also form on storage. Therefore, a detailed understanding of our product's chemistry, 
the manufacturing process and stability is essential. Current regulatory guidance is constantly changing. There are, however, some key reference documents that are worthy of review. Documents of note include the lessons learnt from the presence of antinitrosamine impurities in certain medicines, nitrosamine impurities in human medicines published by the EMA, and also the information required for nitrosamines for marketing authorization holders, as was published by the Heads of Medicines Agency, CMDH. These documents provide a good basis for what product license holders are required to do for existing products and also what is required to be submitted in a new marketing authorization application. For existing marketed medicinal products, a risk assessment is required. This risk assessment must cover the presence of or the potential of nitrosamines being present in the commercial product or forming in commercial products on storage within its shelf life. Within Europe, that covers all chemically synthesized APIs and drug products, as well as biologics. In Canada, there's also a requirement for the risk assessment, but as yet it does not include biologics. However, due to the multinational nature of our industry, it will seem prudent for license holders to include biologics at this time, whether specifically required for an individual market or not. There are well-documented deadlines. Within Europe and the UK, chemically derived APIs and their resulting drug products must be reported to the agency by the 31st of March 2021. Biologics must be reported to the agency by the 1st of July 2021. Meanwhile in Canada, chemically synthesised APIs and drug products must be reported by the 31st of March 2021, the same as in Europe. But what about our investigation on medicinal products? IMPs are not currently within scope of any of the requirements for a risk assessment at this stage as demanded by regulatory agencies. However, we do know that the data that we generate now for our IMPs will be used in MAAs and NDAs, etc. This is a requirement already for new applications to multiple agencies. This is a development backbone of our submission. So whether we're in phase one, phase two or even late phase three trials, we still need at some point to understand the impact or the potential impact of nitrosamines on our products. You may already have suspicions about your IMP as to whether it carries a nitrosamine risk or maybe even does not carry a risk based upon your existing knowledge of the manufacturing process and the chemistry. It's important to understand and remember that we are the experts for the products that we generate and develop. We also have to remember that any change to IMP chemistry, either via a change in the manufacturing route or a change in the formulation, etc., can have an impact on our existing nitrosamine risk assessment. Even with a risk assessment which shows minimal risk, we may have to, at some point during the development process, revisit that risk assessment. If we find a high risk or we find a level of nitrosamine that we cannot support moving forward with, then this may even require a process change or a route change or a formulation change. And as such, this could impact our ongoing concurrent stability trials, which aim to support our product registration. The impact and the potential impact of finding nitrosamine issue during your development process could have a huge impact on your product development cycle and your timings to commercialization. We all know the pressures to get good candidate molecules to market. Therefore, the more knowledge and information and data that we can gather up front helps us minimise the risk from nitrosamines, at least during the development and clinical process. So what does this mean to me as a development scientist? What do I have to do to make sure my product has the best chance of success in gaining a marketing authorization, at least with consideration of the risk of nitrosamines? Obviously, if you work in a commercial environment, there was already an impact on you because your portfolio of commercial products already has a requirement to be assessed for nitrosamines. However, if you work in R&D, 
you may have thought this is an issue that you will come across later during the development process. But as I've just mentioned, the potential for impact can be huge, so the earlier you assess the risk, the better. As a development scientist, you need to look at your process, look at the chemistry, the API, to fully understand the potential for nitrosamines, either carried forward from the API manufacturing process or from formation during the drug product manufacturing storage. Consider if there is a risk, what you may need to change, and also after those changes, what would you need to do to requalify your product? What would you need to test if you do find a nitrosamine risk? You may want to consider to start testing some of the products you've already have on storage, or maybe even some end of shelf life product if you have it for the presence of nitrosamine. Bearing in mind your analytical methodology would have to be sufficiently robust and validated to be able to detect such small amounts. This in itself can be a challenge. With regards to what data you require, if your risk assessment shows that the chemistry of your API and all the processing of your API into the drug product is effectively not possible to form nitrosamines, then you have a very straightforward risk assessment document that you could then submit during your registration process to assist in gaining a marketing authorization. If you don't have that level of confidence, then you will have to assess the level of risk and the potential level of nitrosamines in your final drug product and the resultant impact that could have on a patient. Obviously, considerations such as acute or chronic dosing, the number of dosage forms to be dosed, and the potential exposure that a patient will have over their lifetime by administration of your drug product are all key factors. There is also the resultant risk benefit assessment that is needed if you cannot mitigate a potential nitrosamine risk versus the disease state to be treated, such as in the case of treatment of life-limiting diseases. As previously discussed, agencies at the moment have a staged approach to the assessment of nitrosamines, currently looking at marketed products and also now considering marketing authorization applications and the data that's required in those applications to support a new product license. However, as mentioned previously, IMPs are currently out of scope of this guidance, but I don't believe that will last forever. The fact that we have to submit this data within our marketing authorization applications obviously leads to the requirements at some point that during the development process, we have to generate that risk assessment and data if needed. What are the risks to us as development scientists and to the industry for not looking at this data during the IMP stage? As there is no requirement currently for IMPs to be assessed for nitrosamine, there is no risk to our ongoing clinical trials. There is no risk to our stability testing, certainly not from a perspective of patient risk, as there is limited dosing compared to a commercial product. There is, however, a risk to our timings in so much as if we assess a high risk of nitrosamines, either via our risk assessment or testing regime, that may necessitate a change in the formulation or API route, or just overall in our risk benefit analysis of patient benefit versus the risk of nitrosamines. We have to bear in mind that a risk assessment is now required during the submission of our license applications. Therefore, the sooner we understand that risk, we can mitigate it to give us the best chance of success during the application process. Agencies are now actively seeking this data during that review process, and we do not want to be in a position where we have to generate that risk assessment or even analytical supporting data during the review process or after we've submitted our application. What are the risks for our IMPs if we defer action until later during the development process, or even right at the very end of our development process when we are preparing our submissions? If our risk assessment shows we have a high risk product, or if we detect nitrosamine in our drug products during manufacture or in storage, we have a problem. If we do not submit a risk assessment in a marketing authorization, a license will not be granted. If we submit a risk assessment and do not have mitigation in place or a detailed risk benefit analysis of our product versus the potential of harm from nitrosamine formations, then again, we will not get a license. Therefore, the risk to a product launch can be very high if we defer this investigation into nitrosamines into the later stages of product development. 
In addition, for later in the development process that we conduct this risk assessment, we may have to do additional work such as investigate a potential new synthetic route or generate additional stability data. But even after we conduct that work, we may still not be able to mitigate the risk fully. If we can't demonstrate that the risk-benefit relationship between our product and nitrosamine formation is still in the patient's favour, for example, such as in life-limiting disease states, then this carries a significant risk to the product being registered and marketed. So what should we do? We should generate risk assessments as early as possible once the chemistry of the synthetic route is locked down definitely before our phase 2b formulations. We should look to future proof, looking always ahead to the submission with regards to what are the risks. How do we assess those risks? How do we measure those risks? Ultimately, how do we mitigate them? In summary, we should look at our portfolio of investigational medicinal products as a matter of urgency. We should consider and plan for success and approach each product as if it were a marketed product at that stage and conduct a full risk assessment. We should develop a process, a pathway, for assessing nitrosamine risk as a standard tool in our product development toolbox. This should not be a one-off exercise. This should be something we consider routinely moving forward for all of our development candidates. NSF Pharmaceutical Services can help you. We can assist in your product risk assessments for your existing medicinal products. We can assist in assessing your supply chain, your processes and your data if you have any, all as part of your existing license holder responsibilities. In addition to your commercial products, NSF can assist you in all stages of your IMP development process. We can help with risk assessments for your IMP route selection, the chemistry of your API, data interpretation where you have decided you need to generate data to determine the level of nitrosamines or potential nitrosamine forming agents present in your formulations. We can assist in the generation of risk assessments or expert review of your existing assessments for you to facilitate you in demonstrating to an agency that you have good control and a good understanding over your drug products. Thank you for your time joining me in this webinar and if you would like to discuss your requirements in more detail or have any further questions at all please don't hesitate to contact NSF via the contact details on the screen here. Thank you.